Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Ladies and gentlemen, in this video we're gonna continue our videos about the electric car design from scratch The previous videos we talked about the suspension system and uh, an, an overview about electric car main components In this video we're gonna focus more and more about the uh, lower and upper control arms and its design so let's continue the control arms control arms pushings and ball joints may not be common household terms for many vehicle owners you may have never even uh, heard of them but they cr are critical components of your vehicle suspension system that allow your tires to smoothly go up and down in a controlled fashion without them your ride probably would not be very enjoyable. So as we can see here, the control arm, this, I guess this is the lower control arm and it's connected to the knuckle and the knuckle is connected to the steering system and uh, the, this lower control arm connects the knuckle to the chassis, okay? So you can get many designs of this and many real pictures of that so you have to uh, do a research and get that most of it is used either one or two control arms per wheel on both the front and rear suspension many front wheel drive vehicles only use a lower control arm while trucks and sports utility vehicles often have both an upper and lower control arm a control arm connects the wheel hub and steering knuckle to the frame of the vehicle. A specific control arm is produced from a hollow closed profile of high strength extruded aluminum. The arm is produced in a wholly cold process, similar to the one used to produce aluminum fenders involving stretch bending, pressing, cutting, and punching of the aluminum profile into the desired shape. So your homework is to get more and for much information or uh, you have to dig to more to get some information about how uh, the control arms are produced or how uh, or what are the uh, production processes that are needed. So the arm has a closed and smooth shape. In addition, it has a rib on its outer surface for fending of water and snow. You have to know why we use ribs. Okay, so it's outer surface for fending of water and snow. In mechanical engineering, a fillet is a rounding of an interior or exterior corner of a part design. An interior or exterior corner with an angle or type of bevel is called a chamfer. So you have to know the difference between the chamfer and the fillet and why we use a fillet here and why we use a chamfer here. These are questions you have to find the answers. Fillet geometry when on an interior corner is a line of a concave function, whereas a fillet on an exterior corner is a line of convex function. In these cases, fillets are typically referred to as rounds. Round Joints, okay. Rounds, joints, I guess. So uh, here is convex to concave fillets. This uh, figure I got it uh, from a YouTube video about fillets. So as you can see here, the convex fillet, and here is the concave fillet. Okay. Also, we have here uh, example of an unfilleted unfill uh, pole to the left. And here we can see the fillet. So fillets commonly appear on welded, soldered, or brazed surfaces. Stress concentration is a problem of load-bearing mechanical parts, which is reduced by employing fillets on points and lines of expected high stress. So the fillets, gentlemen, why do we do fillets? Distribute the stress over a broader area and effectively make the parts more durable and capable of bearing large loads. That's why it's pretty important to have fillets at the parts like the control arms uh, which have stress concentration 
Four considerations in aerodynamics fillets are employed to reduce interference drag where aircraft components such as wings, struts, and other surfaces meet one another. For manufacturing, concave corners are sometimes filleted to allow the use of round tipped end mills to cut out an area of a material. This has a cycle time benefit if the round mill is simultaneously being used to melt complex curved surfaces. Ready are used to eliminate sharp edges that can be easily damaged or that can use injury when the part is handled. Okay, uh, so this is the presentation. This is a very short presentation in this video, but I guess you uh, learned uh, some good things today, so now it is the time to see uh, the control arm on a CAD file, so let's do it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have here a model that uh, is available uh, on GrabCAD. The full assembly of the suspension is uh, available on GrabCAD, so here are the uh, steps. And we can see here, this is the uh, lower control arm. As you can see, we have here fillets. That's why I showed you the importance of the fillets and the rounds to avoid the sharp edges. Okay, and we can see here, this is the control arm, a shape. And we have here the rib. And also we have here some ribs to uh, enhance the structure, you know, it connects the steering knuckle to the chassis, so it's pretty important to uh, be sure that it will do the job, and we have here the uh, place of the bushings, bushings and the other side so as you can let me know where the ball joints not be common okay okay it was I found it here So, uh, control arm is a bar that has a pivot at both ends. Uh, your car is several, including the upper control arm and the lower control arm, which are initiated to form layer A. The control arms are the part of the suspension system. Okay, and we hear linings. As a result, okay, two, two bottom points of the control arms that form a layer A are attached to the frame of the vehicle and the top is attached to the spindle. So, we have here, these uh, are connected to the frame, gentlemen, okay, and we have here to the spindle, okay, and also it connects the steering knuckle. We will see in the next videos the, uh, the assembly uh, of the knuckle and the, the spindle and the control arm, okay, so do not worry. We're just making some steps, step by step, and three or four control arms are placed between the rear axle housing and the frame if you have coil springs in both the front and rear suspensions. Okay, so we can see here, here the design, and we can see here that uh, it is not easy, but uh, if you learn how to uh, do it, you will find it easy. Number of fillets, and we have here a rib, fillet, fillet. And also ribs and extrusions and you know here a chamfers so you make zoom here here are the chamfers and here are the fillets to avoid sharp edges okay so this is the control arm you will find these details 
available online and also if you click file new drawing of course there are many designs for the control arms but the basics are the same So as you can see here, you can make these drawings easily. For the details and final uh, drawings and designs. Yeah. So as you can see here, these are the drawings. So these, uh, you have to practice these kind of things by yourself. Very amazing when you produce these things uh, on your own. Uh, do not depend on the, uh, the available drawings online. You have to uh, know why do we do this and why do you do that? Why we should avoid this and this kind of uh, information you have to get them by yourself okay and to know why uh, it is forbidden or it is very uh, big mistake to make a chamfer here or there and why do we felt so I guess we uh, so have just seen a good thing today and so the next video we're gonna continue with the other parts on the other components i will show you also uh, the cad designs of them okay thank you very much i hope this helps you and please get research papers and uh, using vendor or solidworks by yourself thank you very much